Last time on Pole House Black Pock Weekend Getaways, we arrived at Thousand Hill State Park, went for a tour of the campground, including this wonderful beach, went for a walk on the Red Bud Trail, and we fixed a German dish called Beer Rocks. <laughs> Alright, I am doing my part of the sticky bones. <clears throat> and you gotta have the sticky part, so I'm doing that. So we're gonna start with a 10 inch deep Dutch oven. You can use a shatter if that's what you got, but we, that's all we have with us is the deep, so that's what I'm gonna use. And I've already had and lined it with foil, and I sprayed it down. So, next step, I'm gonna do about half a stuck stick of real salted butter. Half a stuck, huh? Half a stuck, half a stick. Sand and the easy way to do is just kind of cut it into little thin. You don't have to be real precise, do you, honey? No. Butter sometimes wants to do what it wants to do. Some nice different blobs in there. The kids little like pads. this when it's sweet rolls, don't they? Yeah. For some reason, they don't like the pecans. We must not have raised them right. We must not have. After my half cup of butter, we're going to add a nice, healthy portion of brown sugar. I don't really measure it out. It's probably, what, about a third of a cup, Angel? Yeah, or a little nice, more. Nice, healthy layer. Maybe closer to a half a cup. Won't be good for my diabetes, but... Good for taste. Oh, yeah. Never really measured it out. I just kind of keep it until I get a nice, good... Layer, we'll get you a close up here what it looks like here in a minute to kind of see how much we use, how much of a layer we put in. There we go. And still see them of pads of butter in there. Wash that off there. And the next important thing, of course, we got to have is some ground cinnamon. Nice, healthy layer of that. More cinnamon, the merrier. Yeah, cinnamon's not one of them spices that you have to worry about overdoing like you do some now, I don't know. Spices. A friend of mine did. It was almost black with cinnamon. Well, that may be a little bit, but it's not quite as bad as some of the other ones. Uh-uh. And cinnamon tea. And the last thing we got to have, of course, is chopped pecans. Even they spread that all over. That looks like Next. a lot of pecans. Yeah. We like pecans, so we're putting quite a bit in. We'll probably be doing a good half a cup. Or more. More, or more. Like a cup, I think. Might be, yeah. And that'll be it for now. And you're just going to work on the rest of it here in just a few minutes. Well, I'm going to come in here now. All right. He's going to move over. And then I'm going to start working on my frozen bread dough. So, we'll be right back. Okay, now. Something we learned when we were at, I think it was Branson, wasn't it, at Silver Dollar City? Oh, yeah. They yeah. mix their, uh, inside the cinnamon stinky bun, they mix those ingredients together and use it as a spread on top of it. So I'm going to do that. I kind of like doing it. Now I'm going to use margarine because it makes it spread easier. About a half a stick, wouldn't you say, honey? I'd say so. That's right about there. Room temperature? Well, as room temperature as you can get, it's not actually warm out here. Well, it's warmer than it was yesterday, but. Yeah, for sure. I think it'll stir better than butter would, that's for sure. I'll need this knife again here in a minute. I'm gonna add my brown sugar. 
Oh, I'd say about that much for inside. I'm out of the good half a cup one. Well, probably a little more than that. Of course, if it's packed down, it probably would be about a half a cup. And I'm going to stub my toe in this. There. What is that? Cinnamon. Of course. Yeah. That's what makes it nice and yummy. Oh. Well, I don't know what that was that stopped me from mixing. When I'm done, this will be real easily spreadable on my bread dough. Now we're using frozen bread dough. Did you pick up there? The one we got had five loaves in it. So we brought three of those loaves for this weekend. We're fixing this one for breakfast in the morning and then our supper is going to be one of the other loaves and then tomorrow we're going to fix our supper and it's going to be the third loaf that we brought now i package those when i put them in the cooler i put them all separate for fear that they'd start raising and stick together so i put them in separate ziplocs but you left them frozen when we put them oh in the yeah cooler, they were froze you? hard as a rock yeah Fact is, it takes several hours to defrost those, and that's important. You got to get them totally defrosted. Okay, we're going to call that good enough. Then I'm going to get my bread dough out here, clean that off. Where? Oh, there it is. You need a rolling pin. We leave that rolling pin in all the time, and a little flour. For rolling on. Is that rolling? Uh, is that cutting board going to be big enough? We'll make it do. All right. Okay, we're going to just get enough to roll out. Oh, that bread dough rolls good. All right, I think we're done with that. Well, I may not be over there. Nice and light. See how fluffy it is? Now, normally I'd make the bread dough even out here, but it's so easy just to do this. Frozen bread dough out here camping. Roll it out. Ooh. getting mighty long. I think maybe I am going to put it on the table. Can you pull that cutting board out? Mm -hmm. Let's just put it on the table. You want to roll it out fairly thin. As rectangular as you can get it, which I don't get very rectangular. going to look about right. One thing about bread dough, there's not much you can do to ruin bread dough except get it too hot. If it's too cold, chances are it won't raise quite right, but too hot. Too hot will kill your kill yeast. Your yeast yep. I've seen some people recipes where they'll put melted butter and smear that, but I think in the bottom line, that's make a whole lot of difference, does it? Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. You know? Especially not in the Dutch oven. Yeah. Now, I'm going to spread it out with my hands a little bit. Yeah, get as far out as you can so we can yeah. roll it up make it good. Yummy, Cinnamony yummy. and gooey all the way through the... Now, these are basically cinnamon rolls at this point, aren't they? Yes, they are. What makes them sticky buns is having the stuff in the bottom. You could either do it with the nuts or without. I guess you could do your choice of nuts. Yeah. We like good. pecans. That's why we That's use kind of pecans. the staple, I think, for sticky bones. It's not want to spread real good. It's butter was a little colder than... Well, it was margarine, not butter. Yeah, we used butter in the bottom 
and then margarine and just because margarine's easier to here to roll up to roll around. A lot of times you can get by with mixing them and you still get that good butter flavor and oh yeah you can still get by and make a darn good. Okay now I'm gonna roll this from this way. Actually I'm gonna add a little more cinnamon just for GP. Doesn't look very cinnamony mini 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 or some people probably put nutmeg or something like that yeah. into it but you usually don't but you certainly could. Nutmeg's one of them most versatile uh, seasonings. It's either savory or sweet, either one. Yeah. Cinnamon's kind of that way too, isn't it? Yeah, but not as not as much as nutmeg. You use a lot of nutmeg in a lot of uh, meats. Calls for nutmeg. Okay, now Be there. There's that. Now I need the Dutch oven. I'm just going to start cutting here. All right, hon. Get the Dutch oven out for you. Okay, thank you. Can you start placing them in the kitchen? Yep, I sure can. Place them. With the oh the seam side toward the next one. Keep them unraveling. Yep. Oh, okay. Your mom would like these. They're not real thick. Or not real big. Uh uh. They won't be until they raise a little bit. When they cook, they'll be bigger. Keep placing them around. Some of your stuff from inside falls out. You place them around. Now these are going to have to raise again. About 30 minutes to an hour. And Wade's going to do something different, aren't you, honey? Yep. You're going to try your hand at stacking, aren't you? The yeah, we're going to put a 12 inch on the bottom and charcoal on the bottom and top of that. And then on top, we're going to put this 10 inch and charcoal on the bottom and top of it. Kind of a neat technique that you can do more. We only doing two. You can actually do as many as you want. It's really easier, though, as you go taller and you stack, you go to a smaller Dutch oven. And it's also kind of nice to have things that are cooked about the same amount of cook time. I may have gotten these a little too close together. Well, you can still move them, can't you? Yep. I'm going to. Give them a little more room to spread out instead of up. Yeah. Because they're going to grow quite a bit oh, yeah. before we... They'll Make fill this you. Dutch oven pretty good. Yeah. Uh-oh. <coughs> 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 oh. Something out here my nose doesn't like. Okay, honey. Those are ready to raise. Ready to raise. Yep, they're ready to raise. So... They don't look like much right now, but they'll be yummy goodness for in the morning. All right, Wade. You just had a conversation with yourself on how many briquettes we needed to stack. Well, normally I've got this down to a science and embedded in my brain. But with stacking, it's a whole new ball game. We've had a lot of people that have questions uh, with how to stack their Dutch ovens to get a good amount of heat. Because so, they wind up burning some of, of it and the other time, of it yeah. don't get done. So I thought I'd do it. I'm not an artist, and it didn't take the time to do a real good job of drawing this. But I'm going to give you a quick tour here. <clears throat> so basically, with what we're cooking, if we're cooking it by themselves, we would take the 12-inch Dutch oven, and we would do 30 pieces of charcoal. 11, 
in 19. And then if we were doing a 10 inch by itself, we would do nine and 17. So with that deep tan, with about 26 pieces of charcoal. So here's what we need to do now that we're gonna stack. So come back in here, Angel. We're gonna use our normal 11 on the bottom. And of course, we're gonna use our normal 17 on top of this Dutch oven. Now, since we're using these charcoals for this, we don't need these, we cross them off. And that gives these charcoal and what we do is we're gonna add all these three together and you get about 47. And since you got this air gap trapped in here, then we wanna not wanna overheat the bottom of the top in here. So we're gonna subtract about two charcoal. So that'll give a total of about 45 pieces of charcoal. And the other thing we need to do, and I'll show you when we're, when we're stacking them, is we're gonna put the normal amount of nine under this top this top Dutch oven and the rest are gonna be scattered out around the outside edge. So hopefully that'll be how it's gonna work. So both things get down about the same time and nothing gets burnt. Normal, do about 11 on the bottom, 10 or 11 on the bottom, good number. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we still are gonna go by our same method of putting all of them around the outside. Okay. Now, here comes the tricky part. Now, we're gonna put our 10 inch sticky bums kind of centered right on top. And it normally where we're gonna be putting about nine, eight or nine on the bottom. So we're gonna do that now. We'll stick them up underneath there. And we'll go that route. That's a good start. Now just keep putting them around the bottom. A little trickier to get in here when there's this lip of this Dutch oven out here. And this way we're not putting any in the center of our 10 inch Dutch oven. Now we normally put about 16 or 17 on top. So basically that's going to be a pretty good ring on here. Just another one or two. Let's see. There we go. And the rest I'll dump out. And they'll go evenly spread around the top of the bottom. Dutch now you're oven. sure that's gonna cook, huh? I hope, yeah, it'll be fine. Doesn't look like much. Yeah, it'll be fine, there's plenty. And there we go. We're gonna do the same method. Should take about the same amount of time as we were gonna put the regular uh, by themselves. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, time for the first rotate. So, to do that, first of all, we gotta take the top Dutch oven and move it out of the way. Then we're gonna rotate the Bottom like normal, one third of a turn one way, and then the lid, a third of a turn in the opposite direction. And then, I didn't rotate this yet, so I pick it up, and now I'm gonna rotate it one third of a turn one way, and the lid, a third of a turn in the opposite direction, and that's it for now. We'll come back in 10 minutes and do it again. Okay, we've rotated them 10 minutes ago. Now it's been 10 more minutes. We're gonna rotate our ovens again. I'm gonna set the 10 inch off. Third of a turn on the bottom, just like we did last time. And we'll put the lid. Third of a turn in the opposite direction. Now we'll pick it up and rotate the top of it, same way. One third one way, and back the other way, a third of a turn. And we'll give her about 10 more minutes. It should be a total of 30 minute cook time. That should be getting these dessert, no, it's breakfast. Breakfast tomorrow and our supper just about done. See you in 10 more minutes. Okay, the timer just went off again, dear. Now what are we doing? Well, it should be hopefully about done. So let's start Now this is the cinnamon rolls for in the morning. 
We'll check them. I smell them. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. I think they're done. I think they are too. We'll eat them in the morning. Okay, our sticky buns are done, so we're gonna keep them for tomorrow morning breakfast. Try. <laughs> so, well, we might have to sample some what's going on, but we're gonna put them on this plate to store them, but I think we'll make it easier. We're gonna try. We're gonna put them on this plate. Now, this is the fun part. Hold it over. We'll put the plate on top of the Dutch oven. Then we'll get our gloves back on because it's still hot. Now, the fun part, we'll flip it over and then see how it comes out. I'll get this out of the way enough. There we go. Now grab both hands. Give it a quick flip. Hurt it fall, so that's good. Carefully lift this off. Ready, Angel? Mm hmm Oh, 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 looking pretty good. Look at that cleaned out Dutch oven, And that's too. a nice thing, yes. Get my gloves out of the way. You can actually, because it's cooled a little bit. Let this rest about five minutes. Pull that out, and the Dutch oven's pretty much clean. We'll take a paper towel, wipe it out, and we'll be in Look good shape. Look at that, though. Pretty it's good all stuff. all oozy goozy on the sides. That's a real sticky bun there. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm hungry. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We were hungry this morning, weren't we? Well, yeah, we got up and got breakfast going and had a nice little breakfast. Unfortunately, of... we didn't get a picture of it. <laughs> uh, well, we didn't get a picture of the plate, plated up version right. of our sticky buns, but we did get footage of it when it was we ate some last fresh, night too. hot out of the Dutch oven and flipped over on with the pecans are on top instead of on the bottom. So, but uh, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a pretty good. A recipe fun to do out, especially out like this and that. <clears throat> See, like it worked really good with that one, one loaf, loaf of, of bread. frozen bread. Yes. Yeah, it really was handy Most to make of the a time small I do. batch. It was a, we used a 10 inch Dutch oven and really worked good to make a small batch of Most of the time I rolls. do a, a batch of rolls. It makes a lot for just coming out camping. So, Yeah, but. when you do homemade, but from scratch yep. bread. And you'll probably we'll do that one of these days. Yeah. When you Probably when you do your chocolate sweet rolls. That's a... That's oh, a yeah, fun, those are good. different type of recipe, and that usually makes a pretty bigger batch. But, And you can make that same size loaf of bread and chunk it up into a regular bread. We've done that in a 10-inch. Uh -huh. And you can make just regular dinner rolls or regular sweet rolls and make about the same amount. Yeah, or uh, monkey with bread. That. Yeah, those are, that's real good, too. Yeah, it works, works pretty good. But uh, we uh, don't know what we're going to do yet today. Nope, but we're going to go figure out something to do. Yep, it's... Uh, we're going to explore again this great state park and maybe see what's ground in Kirksville, too. It is too, a so. very nice state park. Yeah, really nice. So we'll see you on the way. Uh -huh. Let's see. We are at the Thousand Hills State Park. Pictograph Shelter. Pictograph Shelter. Get up here and get a little bit of heat. We're outside the pictograph shelter, and it's uh, we've got some pictures and some video of the pictographs, but we can't get real close uh, because of the way they protected them. Because if you look, they're sandstone and they're yeah, easily damaged. Easily the fact damaged, is, so. you can see where people have etched them. Yeah, there's names a lot of there. it's kind of ridiculous. modern art on top of the original pictographs, so that's why you can't get real close. And uh, it's kind of a shame that people have done that over the years. Questions at the end, but you can also like stop me. That's perfectly fine as well. So I'm gonna 
to start with kind of the basics. Some of us you may already know if you've been here. I'm um, going to start with what a petroglyph is. So a petroglyph is anything that would be made by removing from a rock surface, or really, really simply put, a rock part. Uh, and it is a form of rock art. So while there is graffiti on these, the petroglyphs themselves are not graffiti. Um, so we do like to make that distinction between graffiti and graffiti on it, um, and then make them not rock art. They were made by ancestors of today's I'll go a little bit more into that later, but I like to mention that at the beginning. And in a very general sense, they're used to transmit information. So just to give you a very quick little overview about well, we got done with the pictograph program. That was worth the yeah, it was worth the time. It's For always seems thing, like we learn a lot. If you don't think you may be interested yeah. in something, but it's a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to learn something. There was a lot more on those rocks than I saw yesterday, and it yeah, took somebody back. actually pointing them out. It's a little bit brighter in there too because we had yeah, sunshine today and it was cloudy, but. I really, they said they discovered the uh, pictographs in about 1955. 53, wasn't it? I think the, said, the state park was established in 52. 50, 51 or something like that. Well, we got that, I think, on video, but somewhere in the early 50s. Um, and then they, uh, some, some guy was just walking through yep. and found them. Just that a visitor kinda... at the park found it, and then <clears throat> they became, later on, it wasn't until... The 80s, I think, before they became a historic. No, it was 1973. They became a historic site. Site, yeah, and, and then, then they, they covered it in 1987. 1987, because yeah. people yeah, they put the building over top to preserve you know, it. No, I think I said people from graffiti. I the people just sometimes there's some major graffiti yeah. there, and in some places they've taken away from some of the pictographs. Oh, yeah, people. make it hard to see. Because... Yeah, they do, and they're hard enough to see as it is. And they did say that when they were doing some of these tours in the past, they would do chalk outlines of the pictographs, and they've discovered that that chalk is leaching down into the sandstone. Yeah, so they, that's not common practice anymore, so they don't do any of that. Best thing to do is not touch them at all. Yep. And it was neat. They have a lot of birds, which is the, probably the most common yeah. symbol, and they think it's probably... Uh, sky and maybe that type of thing they have one that supposedly is they think all this is supposition mind you we don't know they think sure. one of them is and it's very it looks like an arrow pointing north could be they said but they uh, said it was a turkey could be turkey foot but it might be an foot. arrow so it's again interesting and then one of the neat things that they pointed out here that is fairly common but not common to most pictographs in Missouri, and that's a symbol of the deer. By and, itself. Yeah, and they really don't know any idea what a real good symbol of the deer as far as that goes. Yeah. Probably the least information the main knowledge. The reason why they don't have much information on it is the Indians, the Native Americans that did the drawings are no longer around. Yeah, so you really don't have it. You just it's kind of an estimate. It, yeah. Much as that. So, But it's really neat. If you're up here at Thousand Hill State Park, you really need to come they by. They say there's another one down at Washington. Now I want to go down there yeah, and see Washington it. Yeah, Washington State Park. There's some, some neat ones down there. So pretty pretty fun. Good good stop. And good visit. And a good program to yeah. come and see. There's also, I think, um, a recent video that they did this spring. Yeah, that it's you can not going to be on. up yet, but they're yeah. going to... On their state parks website, they're yes. going to do these weekly yeah coming up shows. So, so we're going to watch. Yeah, that. they'll be coming up sometime soon. So you might have to go to the conservation department and and uh, check that out yourself too. We leave you on this weekend getaway at Sups in downtown Kirksville. Uh, if you like this video, would like to see more, please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for watching. Pita and hummus with veggie sticks. Would you get this red wine? Mm -hmm. It's a Augusta winery, somewhere here in Missouri. We're not for sure where. I'll have to look it up. Pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And let's see, I've got uh, the. This is the Conundra red wine blend. And it's a California wine.
It's not as sweet as the one you've got. I mean, like yours, the one you got better, don't we? So I mean, like it's kind of neat. Know. We are uh, at SIP, right? Yeah. SIP. It's a SIP here in Kirksville, downtown. And it's kind of neat because you can uh, get a card and then go through and get samples, a little dispenser of all the different kind of wines you have, which is pretty, pretty cool. We might try some more here in a minute.